All right, the only two things you need for weight loss. That's why we're here. And I feel like it's particularly appropriate for uh, the new year. Appropriate. <laughs> Did I sound extra Southern there? Yeah. So it's the new year and uh, we had a good holiday season. Yeah, yeah. we were really chill. Yeah, our 11 year old stayed up till midnight. And we didn't. <laughs> yeah. I was in bed by 10 on New Year's Eve. Yeah, me too, around that yeah. time. And, but our 11 year old stayed up, so. Yeah. <laughs> we're old. He was tired the next day. I think it was his first time doing that. Yeah, I think he was still tired today. I think people, if anybody else stayed up, they're still dragging. Yeah, maybe into, so. <laughs> it's weird. It's smart. So. It's funny because I used to stay up past midnight regularly, whether it was a holiday or not. And life is different now. It's just things change. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of which, let's talk about weight loss. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah. I do think it's appropriate for the new year because I know that every, whether you even care about weight loss or not right now, like you're getting inundated with ads and the media oh, is putting things out. Shows yeah, they're all saying do this, do that, and or, so hey, I did this. You should do it too. Yeah. That's my favorite. Oh, that's that's <laughs> awful. That's awful. So and so much of it really is just bad advice. Mm -hmm. And so this one in particular, um, the only two things you need for weight loss, this this blog that I've written that we're gonna discuss and go into a little bit more detail here, is I feel like it's a really good time to just go. No, all these other little things that everybody's saying, this is what you should do and this is the diet you should be on, they don't matter. It's only these two things. So that's where we're going to start. And with that, I say we just jump in. Go. Okay. Feet first. Head so first. If, if you, uh, maybe both, I don't know, we'll see. It's like a weird dive. It, like when you're a kid on the edge of the pool and you just kind of flop in. <laughs> <laughs> all right, if you want to lose weight, there really are only two things that you have to get right. If you're looking for answers that lie outside the bounds of either of these two things, you are wasting your time and probably wasting a lot of money too, because that's just how things work. <laughs> and what I'm about to tell you is simple. In fact, it is so simple that I know that there are going to be a good percentage of people who hear this, who are going to shrug it off and then to try something that's more complicated because it feels like what they're supposed to do. But not you. You're here. You're watching this video. You're in on us. You're you're done with the extreme diets and you're intense. Gonna, you're gonna see through the emotion that those things are gonna. That those put things. You on. Yeah, and then they're they're only gonna give you temporary results mm -hmm. anyway. At the very best, you're ready for something a little bit more realistic that's gonna last for the rest of your life. You are know? we date? Are we looking for a date? Is this? Because this sounds too good to be true. <laughs> That's the whole point is that it's, I'm not saying it's easy, but it is simple. And so there are two things you need. First, I'm going to start with a little story about um, a woman named Ashley. We're going to call her Ashley anyway. I'm not going to use her real name because I don't want people to know. Her real name's Chloe and I don't want you looking her up. So just kidding. That's not her. <laughs> it's, it's like borderline dad It's joke. not her. That's, it's a good one. All dad <laughs> jokes are good. So Ashley came to us because she thought she, that she was already doing what she was supposed to do to lose weight, but it wasn't working. She had tried several brand name diets, the popular ones, I'm sure you, you name it. <laughs> it. It's probably one that she's tried. Um, she had seen some kind of success in the past, but now things were different. Part of the problem was that those diets just weren't practical for her in the first place. Uh, they, they, certainly, they certainly weren't practical now. They probably never had been. But now, like, as an adult with kids and other priorities, it definitely wasn't something that was practical now. Uh, and the other issue was that even though... Um, even oh, Sorry, I'm losing my place here. The other issue was that even when she was doing some of the same things she had done before, like eating healthy foods, not eating out as much, avoiding snacks before bed, working out semi-regularly. None of it seemed to make a difference. Maybe that stuff worked before and now it's like, well, I can do all the right stuff, but I, it's still, still not helping. I'm still gaining weight. Yeah. So, and as frustrating as that is, it definitely didn't surprise us. And I'm gonna tell you why, plot twist. 
Ashley is just a name that I pulled out of thin air. I was gonna say, I don't remember an Ashley, but... <laughs> but this is a story that we hear from almost every single person that we work with. I already know what's coming next. Just, just so you know, like I never read these ahead of time. And so I already know what's coming next. Do you? Because I know what Ashley was doing and what she needs to do now. Well, I don't know if I'm even gonna go into that. You'll have to let okay. me know. But, okay. but so the thing, it all comes down to this. The things that you are doing that you think are right, they may not be bad things. And in fact, some of the times they may be really good things. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they're confronting the only two factors that actually cause you to start losing weight. 100% of our clients only see success and start to lose weight more consistently when they make a change to either one of the following two things, or both, most of the time both. So I'm gonna go into them now unless you wanted, you were expecting me to say something else. No, I know what you're gonna say. Okay. I can read your mind. Okay, <laughs> okay. What am I thinking right now? Don't say it. Okay, number one. <laughs> number one. Good call. Number one, your portions. So I'll explain in detail here. You can't lose weight if you're eating too much food or drinking too many high calorie drinks. Um, that's it. You, the problem is you can't just start eating less. Mm. So this is where most diets go wrong. They'll tell you to eat less of something like sugar or carbs or dairy, gluten, whatever. And this, this doesn't give you some kind of like sciency advantage to make your body kickstart weight loss. All it does, if it works at all, is it puts you in a calorie deficit. Mm -hmm. You're eating less calories than you are burning by being active. And that may sound like a good thing because you do need to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight. That is ultimately what we're talking about here with your portions. But if it's the only thing that's being impacted, it can steal progress from your weight loss goals by making you excessively hungry. Uh, it can cause you to snack on, on more than what you even realize that you're doing, kind of just subconsciously snacking, or to binge all in one big like meal or on the weekends mm -hmm. all, all weekend long. Um, so that, that's, that's one issue with just eating less. Now, on the, other, on the other hand, you also have diets or whatever, fitness guru people who, they'll swing the pendulum all the way to the other side and they'll say, you don't have to eat less of anything. Calories don't matter. You don't have to be in a deficit. All you have to do is eat some like really oddly specific type of food. Like, and they're, you know, whatever it is, it could be, yeah. oh, you just drink kombucha or take this, you know, eat some ginger just or one magical, which sounds great. I mean, if, if I could just drink, even though I don't like any of those things you just said, if I, if that worked, I would totally do it. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> work. <laughs> so spoiler. yeah. And, and aside from the fact that like a lot of times they'll claim that there's science behind it and they can even cite studies that Cheer. ignore all the other studies. Cheer, you pick studies. Yeah, they they say there's science behind it, but but even whatever the the other problem is. Okay, so just eat this thing. Well, that doesn't prevent you from overeating necessarily. You still could overeat on everything else, even if you eat this these specific foods. So in other words, neither of those approaches, whether it's eating less or saying no, just eat the right kinds of foods. Um, neither one appro really, it, neither one helps you consistently balance your portions so that you can st really stick with weight loss and see continued results. Mm -hmm. So now I want to talk about how to get it right. So if you've got to change your portions, if you've got to work with this, how, how should you do it? Ultimately, it all comes down to getting the right amount of protein, veggies, carbs, and fats. Getting a nutritionally balanced meal. Exactly. It's a mm -hmm. Great way to that. That is what a nutritionally balanced meal is, is getting all of those things. Every single one of those categories of food, and I'm gonna say this too, this doesn't mean that you have to count calories or like be adding up grams or whatever. But, but weighing your food. Yeah, the idea is still the same. So every one of these categories of foods, carbs, protein, all of it, it has its own unique set of benefits. You lose those benefits if you start eating too little of any of the categories. That's why even though most people do tend to eat too many carbs and fats, we don't re recommend just making it a goal to eat less of them. You might need to 
you might need to eat less, but don't make that a goal. Instead, you need to know how many carbs and fats you should be eating and then do your best to not go over that amount. You see the difference there? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and it can be helpful to have a range to work with, by the way. So like if you know, okay, I need to eat a certain amount of carbs and fats. It doesn't have to be exact. It can be somewhere in this window, have some flexibility, yeah. figure it out, but make sure you're getting the right amount. Now, most people also, we, we, a lot of us tend to overeat the carbs and fats. Most people also undereat protein and veggies. So I don't know that I've had one client ever like come to me and they're already eating enough protein or veggies. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to I mean, think, I can't think yeah. of anyone either okay. just off the top of my head. So we all know that should be happening, but yeah. <laughs> However, unlike diets that tell you exactly what to eat, like saying, okay, you need more protein and veggies, have six grams of, or six ounces of chicken and whatever, however many ounces of broccoli. Cups of broccoli eat this, yeah. and ounces of rice, and then your whole family gets to eat that. <laughs> whether they like it or not, whether <laughs> right. it makes your life miserable or not. Dry chicken, and you're gonna eat it. Yeah. What's more important rather than doing that is know how many servings of each of those categories of food that you need, and then develop your own list of go-to foods that you can use to kind of hit that, get in that range every day. Mm -hmm. uh, and the exact number of portions that each person needs is gonna, it can vary extremely wildly, like uh, unbelievably different from person to person as far as how much you actually need of each. But just as a starting point, in if you just want to kind of go, okay, roughly, like, where should I start? And then adjust from there. Try to get one to two servings of each of those things at every meal, three, three to four times a day. Mm -hmm. And that's going to get you ballpark. Yep. It, it could be You can off. tweak it from there. Yeah, it could be off, but exactly. You can, you can adjust it as you mm -hmm. go. Um, and specifically, like, if you're, if you are doing that and you're like, oh, this is too much food, then go ahead and reduce some of the some of the portions that you're eating everything but, not just the things you don't like <laughs> right but but remember to look at carbs and fats as going okay am i getting too much of this in general because maybe if i need to cut back probably don't cut back on the protein and veggies because we need more of that or on the flip side um if you're losing weight and you're but you're not losing it as fast as what you want uh, then you might need to, again, cut the carbs and fats. I, I guess the point I'm trying to make here, just to summarize, is if you're going to add something, focus on the protein and veggies. If you're going to take something out, probably better to do carbs and fats, but don't just like, again, don't make it the goal of just saying, I'm going to eat less carbs and fats. Yeah. That's not the focus. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Is there yes. anything you want to add to that? No. Because you're more the nutrition. That's pretty good. Okay. All right. So that's the one thing that you got to get right. And that's roughly how to do it. Obviously, we can help you if you actually want someone to just literally say, okay, here's how many portions you get yes. and to help you figure out how to do it. Troubleshoot based on your goals. What, are, what is a car? What food is a protein? Uh, we can help you with all that yeah. so you don't have to question it and wonder. So the second thing that you need to change and get right is your daily activity. When you change your diet for weight loss, even if you do a really good job with getting all of your portions right, at some point, your body is going to adapt, and it starts right away, but it can progressively adapt more and more over time. And it'll cause you to burn less calories throughout the day, which makes it more difficult to lose weight. And for some people, it can that adaptation can be pretty drastic and happen like immediately. Like I tend to have to cut calories pretty low to get where I want to be. So the two solutions to this are either that you have to eat less portions again, which, which is never exciting. Yeah. And, and eventually it just becomes impractical. I mean, really how low on a calorie deficit do you want to go and be, you know, not hating your life? Pl yeah. Plus missing out on nutrients. So it could just be, get to the point where it's unhealthy. It's like, okay, yeah, you can eat less and lose more weight, but yeah. like, are you actually, is your body going to, are you going to get sick? Cause that can, that can happen. Yeah. So the other alternative then is to be more active. And the problem is the most, the thing that most people turn to when they're like, okay, I gotta be more active is what they go there's like, I gotta exercise more. I gotta exercise every day. That's what I gotta do. And that's not the answer. 
And don't get me wrong, exercise is important, especially for healthy weight loss for a number of reasons, but it's not going to make as big of a dent in what we're talking about as far as um, burning more calories each day. It doesn't do as much as what most people think. It certainly doesn't do as much as what like your fitness tracker says yeah. or the treadmill says. Actually, it can be more detrimental to your health and like your physical recovery too. Yeah, yeah. So to summarize that, it, you can work out regularly and still have trouble losing weight. So you have to you have to be more active in the right way. So that's what we're going to talk about now is how to do it the right way. One of the main one of the main reasons you can't rely on exercise to help you burn enough calories and start losing weight is because you can't do it all the time. You're going to that's either going to burn you out or you're going to end up getting hurt. So in other words, there's only so active you can be if the thing that you do to stay active is just work out. And since most people struggle the, to be consistent with exercise as it is, I always recommend working out less frequently. Like most of our clients work out two to three times a week. Mm -hmm. Even once a week is okay. Two to three tends to be a good average what most people can do. Um, and then find other ways to be active the rest of the week. And, and when I say find other ways, I literally mean do whatever you want. As long as it's not sitting down. Yes. Anything that gets you off your oh, butt. Yeah. I mean, one of the ladies we were talking to recently was excited because she could go play basketball or go to the park with her kid and just being more active and being more intentional about that. Even one client right now, she just gets up whenever her watch goes off and, and walks around for a little bit. It's like just something a little bit more, but it, with some intentionality behind it. Yep. And, that, and that's exactly right. It can be any of those things. It could be a hobby, a new thing that's just oh, like... I've got them all listed there. Yeah, that, that's you were doing great. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read it word for word because you you did some good ones. But it can be hobbies like you take up a new sport, pickleball. We've started doing that more recently. Um, it can be gardening. It can be cleaning out your garage. It can be uh, just what what a lot of people end up finding works well for them most of the time is just going for a walk. Yeah, it's a low barrier to getting it done, and it's enjoyable. I yeah, mean, it depends on where you live, I guess. Stress relieving, yeah. If you have the right clothing for your climate. Yeah. Yeah. Now your overall activity level doesn't have to be super high. We're just talking about getting it higher than what it is now. So I would say for a lot of people it ends up being somewhere around an extra 30 minutes of activity a day. Depending. Yeah. Could be an extra 60. Some people 60, especially if they're very sedentary. Yeah. If you really aren't moving at all, then you might need an hour, but start with, start with 20 or 30. Yeah. Just, just increase it a little bit. Yeah. Almost some of my um, clients who are extremely overweight uh 30 minutes is daunting like that's a lot yeah and so we start with five we literally that's fine too. just make goal five minutes and just trying to make that happen every day and, and you can build from there like you don't have to start out with that big fat number you can start small and build your way up to get to some to where you want to be well and specifically with weight loss what happens is over time as your body adapts you need to become more active so start wherever you want it can be nothing <laughs> and then it can be five minutes and then it can be 10 mm -hmm. eventually if you want to see continued weight loss you might have to hit that 30 minute mark yeah. or you might have to hit that 60 if you literally spend your whole day sitting but it just kind of depends on where you're at with your goals just keep in mind that that's kind of the way to do it simple stuff not just i'm gonna go work out i'm gonna learn how to stand on my head and spin around and then do a cartwheel Right? That like it sounds extreme and ridiculous. It doesn't have to be some extreme ridiculous thing. It's it's really as simple, but it's getting those right steps in place. Yes. That's what that's my For sure. Point. I mean, that's <laughs> it's not how I would think of exercise and working out, but yes. Well that's I, how I, I think of it the, sometimes I when I hear it feels that way. What people are doing. I'm like, that sounds complicated. That's not for me. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to put all this together just real quick, kind of tie a bow on it. Uh, losing weight has never been and never will be about eating or avoiding really hyper-specific foods. Uh, it's not about having a certain number of meals. It's not about eating at specific times of the day. It's not about working out as much as possible or as hard as possible or following any specific diet or exercise program. You have to get your portions right, and you have to be at least somewhat active. Those two things. There are a lot of different strategies you can use 
to make this easier on yourself. And again, I'm not saying that it's easy, <laughs> but if you have trouble losing weight, it, or whether you do or not, even if it's just something you're wanting to do, it will always come down to those two things. Yeah, if you're just jumping on, the two things are, because we, we just had someone join right now. Get your portions right, be at least somewhat active. And if you want to know more, you can scrub back and uh, listen to how exactly how to do that. Yeah, because there are a lot of different ways to do it. Um, and, and, and to be honest, figuring out exactly how to do it isn't something that I recommend that you do on your own. And of course I would say that because I'm a personal trainer and she's a nutrition coach and this is what we do and we want to help you. But I want to, I do want to just say that I didn't get to where I am and she didn't get to where she is because we just landed on this and we're like, oh, bingo, we know how to do this now. <laughs> it took years of experience and that's any person, any expert in this field who knows what they're talking about has spent years and years and years guessing, experimenting, trying, failing. Well, your email a couple weeks ago was, here's all the stuff we got wrong over the years, you know? Yeah. Like, we, we had some fails. Yep, and that's the process everyone goes through when you do it on your own. It's okay if you wanna do that. But expect it. Expect to go through years and years of trying and failing. Either that or skip the headache <laughs> and let us help you. We'll show you exactly how many portions you need each day. We'll guide you on exactly how active you need to be. We will give you specific workouts to follow two to three days a week or even once a week if that's all you can handle. Uh, we will hold you accountable and we'll keep you motivated. I thought you were going to say hold your hand. Oh. We'll hold your hand. Even if, if you, you want that kind of meta support. Metaphorically. Because <laughs> it's all online. <laughs> so if you are ready to start getting things right, right now, these two things, then be sure to send us a message or leave a comment and let us know that you want help and we'll be there to start that conversation. Yeah, and... to get you going. Mm -hmm. That's it. Those are the two things. And please, if you do anything else for weight loss, make sure that it addresses those two things in, in a healthy, realistic, doable way. Because totally. otherwise you're wasting your time and money. And I, whether you work with us or not, I don't want you to waste your time and money. So there you go. All right. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.